Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here with Scott Baker. Hi Scott. Hello, Joanna Penn. <laughs> uh, just a little introduction. Scott writes books under various names and is a freelance writer as well as the author of The Writer's Guide to Training Your Dragon and Quick Cheats for Writing with Dragon. And today we're talking about dictation, which is super exciting for many authors. But Scott, uh, just start by telling us a bit more about you and your writing career, as well as how you got into dictation because of that career. Mm, OK, well, I've been um, writing for, as you said, freelance for a bunch of magazines in the UK for many, many years. And, um, you know, I, I was always wanting to write fiction, always. And um, then one day I caught one of your videos believe it or not, on YouTube, all about self-publishing. And you were talking to, you were saying how great the Kindle was. It was very early days then. I think, I think you were in Australia or yes. something. Yes, oh my time. goodness, that yeah. would have been 2009. That's it, it was 2009, 2010, something like that. And uh, you were going on about the Kindle and, and self-publishing. And I thought, what is, what? <laughs> and, and I was so put off writing fiction because I kind of worked in the publishing industry, you know, as a freelance writer. And I thought, oh, I don't want to go down that road, you know, of, of um, publishers and stuff. So I always put it off. And then you come along with this, you know, but you can do this. And I thought, right, that's it. That's blown it. I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to give this a go. And, I, and then I remember watching a video of you with Mark Coker from Smashwords. And you were talking about Barnes and Noble and all of these outlets that we could access through them at, at the time um but you know i'd never even heard of them and i thought well this is crazy so uh, so it's all your fault basically <laughs> oh well, so, i'm thrilled about that <laughs> <laughs> so so what happened was i started you know writing um fiction under different pen names a bit of sci-fi a bit of horror uh, lots of different things and I was doing all right, you know, I was doing okay with it. And I was doing the, the freelance stuff as well. Um, but I was starting to, you know, not, not struggle, but I was getting to the point where it was difficult to juggle it all and hit deadlines, keep my deadlines, my freelance uh, deadlines. And I started looking into Dragon or Dictation um, as a way really of, of just putting me on a level playing field with people who could type quickly because I can't I can <laughs> you know the best I manage I'm not like this but but you know I'm, I'm like three or four fingers um, so the best I can manage is about 40 to 50 words a minute and you know I, I, it got to a point where I thought I'm gonna have to you know speed up my workflow so I started looking at Dragon and I you know been using it 20 odd years ago when it was terrible, you know, it was it, people would openly point and laugh, you know, at the, at the dribble that was coming up on screen. But I, I, even then, I remember seeing something in it. You know, I remember thinking there's, there's something here. It's just way, way, way ahead of its time. Mm. And then when I started looking at it seriously again, five or six years ago, whatever it was, you know, people told me, oh, it's, it's you know, flung ahead now in, in reliability and accuracy. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. And of course, they were right. You know, it was night and day different to to what I'd used a long time ago. So I thought, this is great. I'll get it trained up. I'll hit all my deadlines. I'll be throwing out fiction left, right and center. And uh, and then I had a, a disastrous back injury. I had I had a bunch of herniated discs in my back free at once. Would you believe? Um, so I was literally on my on my back for, for months. Um, and I thought, now what am I going to do? You know, it, it, I couldn't sit up. I certainly couldn't type and, you know, sit at a desk. So uh, I thought, OK, now it's time to get really serious. And luckily, I'd already started with Dragon at that point. And I uh, I managed to do it. I managed to go through, you know, several months of recovery and still get all my work done, get all my freelance work done, keep self-publishing and write, you know, thousands and thousands of words. And I became kind of obsessed at that point. You know, because I thought this this isn't just good, this is amazing software. Mm. And, you know, it became not just a tool for me to write more quickly at that point. It became an insurance policy, you know, against injury and, and whatever. And I became so intrigued by it that I thought, OK, I've got to drill down into how this really works, what 
the best equipment is, what the best techniques are to, to make it, you know, scarily accurate and, uh, you know, just fulfill its pot potential. And once I would kind of figured all that out or most of it out, um, I wrote a book about it. So that, <laughs> that's where we are now. That is where we are now. And it, uh, it's so interesting. Well, just just before we get more into dictation. So um, you've you know, you're obviously on the show as, as Scott and we're talking about dictation. But how many how many books have you got now under other names like, you know, my backlist is probably about 70 or 80. Wow. Uh, but uh, most of them I'd rather forget. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of them are good, very, very good. You know, I read I read some back and think, wow, I wrote that. That's, you know, I'm not so bad after all. But <laughs> it got to the point, actually, the self-publishing became so successful at one point that I gave up the freelance work. The freelance work was kind of getting in the way um, of the self-publishing. I thought, you know, I start to see the benefit of having a backlist, for example. Mm. You know, you... And, so, and uh, just um, and how long? So you've you've written seventy books since two thousand and nine. So since about two thousand and ten, I would say, yeah. Ten. So of varying, of varying length. Some of those are novellas. Yeah. Um, but, but ten you know, ten books a year, oh, basically, with dictation. A lot. Yeah, yeah a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Now, that, that's awesome. And I mean, so obviously, you've described there two massive benefits of dictation. One is word count and um, uh, words per hour. And two is if if you have an injury or if you're suffering from RSI. And of course, I start, I did dictation for one book for Destroyer of Worlds. And that was because at the time I had massive RSI. But then I took up yoga and I'm standing up now at my standing desk and it went away. But you mentioned their insurance policy. And I think that's so important because, you know, I'm now, you know, my husband left his job and, you know, supporting our family with yeah. my writing income. And, and for sure, if something happens, I want to be able to do that. So those are two things. I also wanted to ask you about voice do okay. you do you think that so those are two benefits but you write in different genres do you find that your writing voice is more relaxed with dictation can you do different voices you know as in author voices not made up voices um <laughs> uh, per per genre um you know have you found that better with dictation or do you have to do a lot of editing of that it's a, that's a really good question. And um, I mean, just to, to be clear, I don't actually write any fiction anymore. I stopped about uh, what, what a month away in May. Um, so I, I stopped about September, October of last year. I'm, okay. I'm pure, purely focused now on, on the dragon stuff. Um, and uh, to answer your question, yes, I think your voice does change across different books. Um, there are some people who even, you know, advocate having different profiles for different di different voice profiles for Dragon, um, depending on which genre you're writing in. But what I always found is that certain elements of, of my writing, especially fiction, uh, were way better, way better when uh, I dictated. Now, this is the thing that everybody seems to be scared of. You know, mm. how's my voice going to sound? Well, for me, it, it it's kind of, it, it did make it better. It certainly made certain elements more conversational. Things like, uh, things like dialogue. Mm. I mean, my, my di dialogue went through, you know, went way, way better when I dictated. It was more like people having an actual conversation yeah. as opposed to characters. Um, and I, I used to find there was a lot more humour in there. I'd find myself laughing <laughs> at jokes when I was dictating. I mean, you're not supposed to laugh at your own jokes, but, you know, hey, whatever. But there were certain elements to it that I, I think improved my writing, and I mm. certainly think it improved my non-fiction. Okay. But the interesting, the interesting thing is when I was doing a lot of the freelance uh, stuff for, for publishers, uh, something I used to find really interesting was, um, uh, you know, I, it never, it, there was never a transition period. At no point did any of my editors ever say, this doesn't seem like your usual writing, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so there was clearly not a lot of difference between my typing and my dictation. And one thing I did notice, in, interestingly, is a lot of the articles I used to write, I used to do a lot of stuff for um, photography magazines and for technical magazines. And uh, a lot of the articles I used to write were almost word for word in the magazine. Um, so they seemed to require very little editing. Mm. Um, and that was maybe partially from, you know, years of getting used to maybe the styles of those particular magazines. But it was also, I think, because... The dictation was almost like somebody, you know, 
actually saying the words as opposed to just words on a page. And they seem to be, you know, very clean by mm. the time we got to the editor. But I mean, I, I've never really analysed it in depth. I've just kind of got on with it to the point where I'm so used to dictation now. I don't even think about voice. You know, I don't think about how it would sound yeah, any different to type in anything, mm. you know, genre, you know, or, or otherwise. I think that just comes from practice. Yeah, no, I get that. And I think it's, it is a really interesting thing. Now, let, let's just go through some more sort of process things. Yeah. Because I think the biggest thing is people think that, like, right now, I should just dictate. And if you know, as we're talking, I've just said, you know, when I say, um, and, huh. you know, there are things that you say when you're making things up on the fly. Um, yes. But what what is it best to have in place before dictation? So should people mm. be spending more time, for example, plotting or outlining or preparing an article with, say, bullet points? Or, you know, what is the preparation you should do before dictation? I think that's a really good one as well, because I think it depends very much on what you write. Um, I think if you are the sort of person who, you know, if you write complex science fiction or, or fantasy or whatever, I think it's pretty unlikely that you're a pantser, you know? I mean, <laughs> you're going to have crazy character names and, and place names and world, you know, there's all sorts of world building going on and, and all that sort of thing. And it's very unlikely you're going to be the sort of writer in those genres Mm. Uh, who's making it up as you go along, and unless you know you count the last few seasons of the X Files where they clearly did, but <laughs> but you know they've forgotten what they wrote. I'm sure of it. But in other genres, I don't think it's as important. I think there's a lot, again we talked about the conversational sort of uh, style. I think it's great for things like romance, for example. I know a lot of romance writers who who use it, and for nonfiction, I think it's terrific. You know, but even then. You have to, you know, have an element of plotting, an element or of notes or fact finding or whatever for any of those things anyway. You know, if I was going to write, for example, when I was back writing articles, you know, I would have everything, you know, bullet pointed out. Um, when I was writing fiction, I, I was never a big, big plotter. I wasn't a pantser, but um, I did used to kind of bullet point things and, and have general sort of beats, but not nothing you know, too detailed. Um, so I think it depends on the person. I think it also depends on the genre that you're in. But certainly some genres are going to be far more, you know, it's going to require you to, to plot in a lot more detail because you have to concentrate on pronunciation. Mm -hmm. You have to concentrate on enunciation and, and, and whatever while you're still engaging the creative side of your brain. You know, so I think the the plotting element then kind of helps um, you get past that. You know, you, you can you know what your plot is going to be, you know what you want to say, and you can just get on with, with making uh, Dragon get your words accurately up on the screen. Having said that, again, it comes from practice. I think you get to a point where you dictate and you don't think about it. It's about, it's about making that jump from the words coming from here out of your fingers to from here and out of your mouth and i think mm. it's just a it's just a little mental leap it takes some time but it, it's it's certainly doable for anyone i think yeah so that um and we'll come back to the more technical aspects in a minute i think it's important to kind of talk about these more woolly aspects before woolly aspect. <laughs> before we get into the the details but th the mindset yeah. thing i think is yeah. a, is a huge deal and i you know i definitely didn't crack it i think it's probably a bit like a habit isn't it like i used to bite my nails and then i, ha I had fake nails for a month and right. that month broke my habit because i wasn't able right. to bite my nails and so yeah. and i think the problem is that i fell out of the habit you know I got into it and then I fell out of it and then I didn't get back into it whereas I have a habit oh. of typing and um, yes. I think if you're a new writer like if, if people listening if you're a new writer like oh. try and do this with your first book and that might really help but when you're on like number 23 um, yeah. it, it it's quite hard to kind of break your process um, but then immediately by saying that I'm I've got the wrong mindset. So let's talk about what is the mindset shift necessary to to get you to that point, um, to sort of saying, yes, I am the type of person who can dictate. I, well, for me, it's about embracing it as a productivity tool and, and not treating it, you know, it's a weapon in your, in your writing 
arsenal in your workflow um, and don't treat it like it's something completely alien i think you've just hit the nail on the head you said you know in a way we we type because we're used to it mm. you know it's familiarity that makes us type really you know we're familiar with a keyboard um but you know that's not necessary. It isn't necessarily the best input method anyway. You know, keyboards, the QWERTY keyboard in particular was designed to slow us down. Mm. You know, it, it was designed on typewriters, as you probably know, to stop the, the hammers hitting into each other, you know, when they hit the page. So, um, you know, I, again, it's familiarity. Input methods, you know, they keep changing. We've had, you know, the quill and then we had the pen and then we had the typewriter and then we had the, the computer keyboard. Um, and in the last few years we've had touch and touch is now i would say probably the primary daily input method for an awful lot of people and i genuinely believe that the, the next big input method is voice you know mm. it certainly seems that way i think we're right in the middle of you know the ai wars right now between the big technology companies they all want you to use their particular voice assistant mm. and um it's a mishmash at the minute, as it always is, you know, when something is so new and I'm sure that one or two will prevail. But, you know, it's about they want you to get used to using it in the home. They want you to get used to using it in the car and so on and so on. And it's, you know, it's already on your phone. Um, people are starting to buy Amazon Echoes. I've got them. I think yeah, they're me too. <laughs> they're great. They're great. I mean, I'm one of these people who I love technology. You know, I love, I'm very, you know, all fair with dictation. But the first time I asked it to, you know, play Arcade Fire off Spotify and it did it. I was like, it's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the level of recognition is just amazing. You know? I, I still like asking um, asking us to like turn the lights on and off. And I mean, it's crazy. It's like a really expensive light switch and stereo. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to do it because it's so much fun. I think it's put so much fun back into mm. technology, you know. Mm. And there's other things that I think are just wonderful. But I know, I know um, one of my neighbours, he bought one for his mother, who's like 90. She's mm. literally 90. And she has an Amazon Echo. And she just uses it to turn on digital radio in the morning. Yeah. And yeah. for that, for me, it's the best ever implementation of it. You know, of, of, if you live in an area where you can't even get digital radio and now you've got it over the internet, but you're using your voice to summon it, you know, and it's about familiarity, becoming familiar familiar with with an input method. I mean, I've got two kids, um, one's 11, one's six, and they don't care about talking to a computer. Mm -hmm. They have no qualms about it whatsoever. Yeah. And they're, you know, they're growing up with touch. Um, they're growing up with voice. And, you know, you, you just you do wonder where it's all going to be in a decade, you know? Yeah, I completely agree with you. And I, I mean, I think that the kid thing is is really important. And, and you see, like, my mum, who's 70, it's interesting, and I want to get her one, but she she, so, she won't even have a phone, you know? So she skipped touch. She was very difficult with typing, and she won't yeah. go anywhere near voice. And, and the kid thing, I see that the point is in the next 10 years, if we're not embracing voice, we will be behind in the same way as if you don't have a smartphone right now, you know, you're missing out on a lot of technological help for authors. So yeah. I think that's really interesting. But let's, um, let's so it's also, can I just say, I also think that as well as a mindset shift um, in terms of your actual writing, I think it's a motivational shift as well. Mm. I think you need to, you know, decide to do this. You know, and, and just think, I'm going to get so much more done here in, in possibly in a much shorter space of time. Mm. Even if you're a really fast typist, mm. you know, you could think, well, I'm not going to be putting any strain on my wrists. I'm not going to put any strain on my back or my shoulders or yeah. or whatever. And, you know, we're being told, it's, it was even in the news today, you know, that, that being sedentary is as bad for you as smoking. And, you know, it's all of these things combined. But, you know, I think you need to... to take a look at it and think, okay, it's not just about getting words down. Yeah. You know, there are different, and in, in terms of what you said, you know, what where are we going to be in a decade if we have an embraced voice? That's a really good one because mm. you're going to see authors who are going to be crazy prolific, who are going to be pumping out books, you know, at an alarming rate through dictation. And if you just can't keep up, then that's going to affect your bottom line as well. And that, I think that's especially, you know, important again for anybody who writes nonfiction or, or articles or anything like that. Mm. So there's so many different reasons. And I think the mindset is it has to be motivational as well to, yeah. to 
to get more done, more, more, you know, be more productive through voice. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, and also let's say also more creative because I think yeah. some people are, are, you know, are not interested in the productivity thing. But even if you want to take longer to write, getting that first draft down and using your natural voice, like if you're at the beginning of your author journey, the best mm. way to find your author voice, the things that make your writing you, is probably through through actually speaking, yeah. as opposed to coming up with a sentence that you've agonized over you know that you would have done in your english class so absolutely i, I think it's really interesting so let's um again before we get into the technical stuff <laughs> what um the, the, pro, the process after dictating that first draft mm. um obviously like when i'm typing a first draft i will then print it out and hand edit is that are you still editing by hand or on the computer or do you you know, what's your editing process like or what is the I, average editing process like? Exactly the same as yours. I edit by hand. Mm. Um, I use uh, a, an iPad Pro. I'm, I'm looking around for it. <laughs> <laughs> an iPad Pro with a pencil, mm. you know. I used to use a Surface Pro. Uh, same same idea. So what, I, what I'll do is I'll create my first draft of anything in uh, Dragon and uh, then I'll just spit it out as a PDF and then I'll just sit and you know, mark it up using um, a digital pen. And then what I'll do is I'll split screen it. So I'll have my, on one side of the screen, I'll have my PDF with all of my markup. And on the other side of my screen, I'll have my manuscript and I can make my changes on the right mm. by looking at them on the left. And of course, you know, that's just, you know, and, and I, I might go through that a couple of times, you know, it depends what the editing for that particular thing is, but uh, I don't edit at all with Dragon. Um, mm. it's, for me, it's purely a first draft tool. And I think that's probably the best way to approach it. For, for it, it, it I think it, it can actually interfere with editing in some ways. You know, it's enough to get it to actually, it, I say in the book, you know, it's a bit like a dog riding a bicycle. You know, the, the, even act, the act of dictation, the, the act of words appearing on a screen when you um when you speak them is ridiculous you know the fact that it even happens mm. is mind-boggling you know and with such accuracy so it's like a dog riding a bicycle it ain't pretty you know but look at look the fact that it's doing it it's riding that bike you know so i kind of think just get it to do the first draft mm. and leave it there you know after that yeah. editing is very much a a pen and paper or in my case a digital pen and, and uh, screen process yeah that was funny when I said by hand I actually meant with a pen mm. on paper but I love yeah. your your process <laughs> but that's um and then I think also what's important is you say in the book transcription is the mm. unsung hero of yeah. dictation so mm. what what do you mean I guess yeah just explain what you mean by transcription when it comes to dragon and and why is that so good Okay, well, well, for anyone who doesn't even maybe know what transcription is, it's basically the act of speaking into a smartphone or a voice recorder. Look at my troll voice recorder. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually called a dead cat, by the way. Yeah, That's a the real dead cat. Term for it. Um, but you get a little voice recorder or, or you get your, your smartphone or whatever it is you've got and you just talk into it you record it you make a recording of your of your voice and then that file is then output later um, you can either drag and drop it from a voice recorder from a memory card or you can um, upload it to the cloud if you've got a smartphone um, and you get back to your desk and there it is sitting in your, in your cloud storage you then drag it into dragon and all your words magically appear on screen so that is transcription and you know it, it's amazing because you know, dictation is great and all that, but it still involves you sitting at a desk, mm. you know, with a microphone attached with a cord, you know, and um, yes, you can get, you know, wireless microphones and all of that, but, the, you know, they can be really patchy in terms of quality and accuracy and, and unless you're paying stupid amounts of money. Um, so, you know, the problem with dictation is it you're still sedentary. You know, so even if you you think right, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna move about and all of that, it's tricky to do it with straight dictation. Transcription, on the other hand, is you know like the holy grail for writers because you, you can dictate pretty much anywhere at any time without needing to be in front of a computer. You know, so uh, and don't get me wrong, it you know. If you've got a smartphone, you need something half decent. You need something like an iPhone or, or Samsung Galaxy or something like that because 
the microphone in there, the sound chip that's in there has to be good in order to process your voice in the same way the microphone for your dictation has to be good. Mm. Um, but, you know, if you haven't got a phone like that, then you buy a cheap little recorder, like something for $40, $50 from Sony or Olympus or someone like that. And you've got a dedicated device that works absolutely brilliantly for transcription. Mm. So, um, you know, so that's it, basically. It's the ultimate way, in my eyes, to be portable anywhere. And mm. those moments where, you know, you were doing the dishes or you're sitting waiting for your kid to come out of school or you're going for a walk, you know, suddenly you can dictate while you're doing that. And uh... and I think I think that's I think the point there and I, I what put me off, I think, with Dragon when I was doing it was I was I was trying to dictate into the software. And right. then you, you're half your brain or more than half your brain is concentrating on is it getting the words right on the screen and then yeah. correcting them. Whereas I think this transcription idea is probably the way to deal with it in that just mm. forget about it while you're doing it and then fix it up in that editing. I mean, even if, yeah. you know, because I find first draft is the hardest part. I yeah. actually really like editing. So even if Dragon gets it wrong as it's transcribing, it's easier mm. to fix it then than fix yeah. it on the fly. So I'm almost thinking that that's what I'll do next time is entirely go with transcription. Or alternatively, sit back, close your eyes you know, have a really long usb cable going from your headset or whatever to your computer sit back in a chair and just dictate that way and you know do 20 minutes and when you're done then look at the screen oh i just i just don't have that discipline i wouldn't be able to look no, at it transcription <laughs> is for you then. yeah exactly so so I, and and then the the other thing that people will have an issue with of course is punctuation mm -hmm. um uh, they're like, I don't want to say new line, open quote, hello, comma, close quote. He said, period, full stop, whatever. Um, what, what, Make what it do you... sound so terrible. I know. <laughs> well, what, what, do, you, do you think that you could just, again, if your assumption is that you're, am I making too big a deal of it? Sh should you just get used to that or should you add in the punctuation later, for example? No, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. I'm joking. You say, you know, you, you, I'm, you didn't make it sound terrible. It is terrible. It, it's, it's awful. <laughs> you know, it's the one bit that people quite rightly dread, you know, because you do have to go open quote. Uh, what time are we going to the cinema, comma, Question close mark. quote? Oh, it's a nightmare, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it's like anything. It's with practice you get used to it. Um it's certainly not such a big issue for nonfiction, obviously. Mm. It's when you're writing dialogue, it, be, it becomes hell. Um, but just do it. Suck it up. You know, there's no, there's no, there's no point in my eyes um, not doing it because you have to, if you want to dictate successfully, I think you have to get into this flow state mm. where you are just dictating. And if you can be, you know, saying the punctuation as you talk, um, then... You, you've got to get yourself to that point. And, I, you know, I don't think about it anymore. I, I never think about it. I, I, it's funny now when I'm doing other things, if I'm, you know, just dictating a, a text message into my phone, mm. um, I, I, I save a punctuation. I, I, don't, I just don't think about it anymore, you know. Yeah. So I'll say, see you in five minutes, full stop. And, and I just don't think anymore about it. So I, I think that comes from practice more than anything, don't get me wrong. But mm. I think it's important to do two get that practice in because it helps with every element, including the punctuation. Um, so, you know, instead of, you know, d dictate text messages, dictate emails, um, don't, instead of typing in something to Google Maps, you know, if you want to go somewhere, make a point of hitting the little microphone mm. and asking Google to take you to that place. You know, just get used to using these voice assistants that are everywhere um, and I think you get used to every element of, of dictation as a result and the punctuation just just comes it naturally happens. after all right. all yeah, so um, let's just briefly do some tech, although I don't want to get too techy because, of course, your book is only a few dollars and contains um, the so the hardware and software you recommend. But just briefly, if people want to get into it, um, what what do you recommend um, if they just want to get started, for example? Well, I mean, first things first, you're going to need Dragon software if you're going to do this. There's no There's no getting around that. Um, you know, whether you've got a Mac or PC or whatever, there's, there's loads of different 
three solutions, you know. The, the thing that people say the most is, how can I do this without buying Dragon? Well, you can't, basically. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and not, unless you want to do just very basic dictation, if you want to do the odd letter or the odd email, then, you know, there are there is dictation built into Google Docs, for example. There's dictation built into the Mac OS, even mm. into Windows. Um, and some of it's okay. You know, some of it's, it works quite well. But the problem is none of these other tools can actually learn how you write. You know, it, it's not just about understanding your voice. It's mm. about understanding how you write. And only Dragon can do that because you can train it to do that. And you can, again, we, you know, going back to the, the crazy um, world building and fantasy novels and all of that, if you've got crazy place names or character names, you can put those into the Dragon vocabulary, you know, and, and train the software to hear your voice saying those words and it'll get them, you know. And, and it's things like that that, again, help you get into that flow state. You'll never be able to do it with the free solutions out there. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't correct them either. That's the other side of the coin. You know, if they get something wrong, tough. You know, you just have to, to change it with the keyboard. Whereas with Dragon, you say correct that and it corrects it and it gets it right the next time. So you, you, need, you need Dragon, first things first. You need um, either Mac or a PC. Anything, you know, relatively modern will do. Uh, an i5 processor, uh, 8 gigs of RAM, an SSD, preferably. Uh, if you've got something like that, you, you're good to go. Um, the only one caveat is that the PC software <laughs> is significantly better than the Mac software. So if you are a Mac user, um, luckily you have two options. You can just you know, plow on and, and get the Mac version of Dragon, or you can put the PC version on your Mac using Boot Camp or something called Parallels. So, you know, th that's basically it. Um, in terms of, you know, not wanting to spend too much money, just getting started, I'm, I'm reluctant to encourage people to do that. Yeah, uh, no, I, I, think, I get that. What about microphone? Yeah. Well, this is it. I think you, you've got to view the whole thing as, a, as an investment, and you absolutely have to get a decent microphone because people get hung up a little bit on the specs of the computer and oh, which software do i get the most important part of your setup is going to be your microphone it's it's again i mentioned it in the book it's garbage in equals garbage out mm -hmm. um if you've got like a cheap ten dollar microphone or you know people say oh can i use my bluetooth headset and no <laughs> no you can't you know these things don't work as well as they they sh they need to they're not made for dictation they're not made more specifically for for speech recognition mm. um so you need something that dragon is going to be able to accurately decipher what you're saying so you need a really clear microphone i'm um, just looking at what you've got there on screen you've got like a decent mic there i've got like a road like podcast type mic so anything that's really clear uh, a blue yeti uh, you know, all of those sorts of mics are really good. Mm. But you don't have to go crazy. You know, you, you can spend $40, $50 on something like a Blue Snowball if you want a desktop mic. Um, or you can get a, a headset from Andrea or, Pla or Plantronics for about 30 to $40. And they'll all be great. It, it becomes a law of diminishing returns after a while. Mm. Um, you know, if you go out and spend $300 on a mic, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it's a bit like, uh, again, there are versions of Dragon which come with a headset in the box. Yeah, don't use uh, that, right? Okay. It's rubbish. It's one of those $10 <laughs> headsets. And I don't know why they put it in. I no. don't know still why they put it in because it, it actually creates a really bad experience out of the box. Mm. Now, if you go and buy, say, a $40 or $50 microphone, you're going to go from like 70% accuracy to 95% accuracy, you know, if you train it properly, um, even with an inexpensive microphone. But if you go from, say you know, a $100 Blue Yeti to a $300, you know, super duper speech recognition enabled mic, you're probably going to go from 98% accuracy to 992 you know, so the diminishing mm. returns start to kick in the more you spend. Mm. So I okay. think it's, mm. you know, keep, keep it, keep it realistic. $40 to $100 will buy you a really good mic. 
No, that's great. And I think that's important for people. Um, but it, like we've said, it is an investment and the software is yeah. cu- a couple of hundred dollars. But that's the thing. You kind of have to decide that you're going to do it and uh, change your mindset first and then and yeah. then do it. So people have got the software. They've got a mic. Um, and I'll put the links in the show notes for the mic I use and, and what you recommend. Um, okay. But basically, so they've got all that. So then, of course, the infamous um, Training Your Dragon. And of course, that's the title of your book, The Writer's Guide to Training Your Dragon dragon and you go through that but just briefly what are the what what does training your dragon mean um and you know how should people do that well first things first um again once you've got the the all of the equipment you need you can't then just fire up the software and go this is amazing i mean in many ways they've made dragons so accurate out of the box now but it, it is pretty amazing, you know, but people tend to dictate something really simple the first time they use it. So they'll say something like, I am testing dictation on my computer and it gets it all right. And people go, wow, that's incredible. <laughs> but the problem is when you start to dictate your own work, it all, you know, the wheels come off. So it, you have to train the software to how you write and um one of the things the software will pester you to do, and I mentioned this in the book, is to um, read trading texts. They have all these different texts that you can read. Don't. Don't read them. You should never read them because you didn't write them. Mm. Um, and the other thing it, it asks is, do you want, you know, do you want to scan your, your emails and all of this? No, because you'll have emails written by other people in there Mm. and you know you've got abbreviations in there and and slang words and you know it's just the last thing you should do so um the first thing you should do to train your dragon is basically just fire up the software get all your equipment set up and then just read say two thousand words of something you've written so print it out or put it on an ipad or whatever and sit there and just read it out and whatever it gets wrong correct it Bang, you've just trained it to your own writing style. Mm. You save your profile, you exit the program, and then you go back in again. So you fire up the profile again, and you do another 2,000 words of something else you've written, something different. Don't do the same 2,000 words. <laughs> <laughs> Pick something new and, uh, and do it again. And again, correct what's wrong. Add in any specific words or phrases that you are going to use on a regular basis or i mean i used to always have problem with smash words it always used to have smash and words as two separate words mm, mm. so i you know i put the name of the company and kobo as well was another one it always struggled with so i put those into the vocabulary and then i ask it to train uh it, itself to my voice saying those words so i'll i'll say the, the word three times or however many times it asks me to do it depending on the software and bang that's it it's got it it's now got you saying those words mm. And that's it. So it's a, it's a very gradual kind of um, building up of its algorithm, if you like, to not just your voice, but your writing style. And you start that by by just dictating a few thousand words that you've written. Mm. Um, and you usually on your way after that, you know, you'll find you've probably got really, really good accuracy almost straight away um, yeah. by, by doing that. No, that's awesome. And I think that's probably the mistake that I made before. Um, the thing is, I'm, you know, I'm, ter- <laughs> I'm slight, I'm pretty techy in many ways, but I hate reading how to manuals and all of that. And I think I just was like, hey, I'm just going to like do what it tells me. And I'm just so, going to do it. I'm just going to do it and it'll work. <laughs> and then I think, I think, as you said, I've probably, tra- I probably did the training wrong because I read their test material. Um, and that's, that makes it harder. So I think you know the other thing to say is this is pretty powerful software it's getting more powerful because of course ai and and speech recognition and it recognizes accents doesn't it obviously you have a different accent to me yes, um yes. orna rossi my friend of mine is, is irish has quite an irish accent um yeah. americans you know australians anyone it, it can train itself to your accent right so that's that's yes. not a big deal it, you've got to specify it you've mm. got to specify it but it's pretty good um with pretty much well most accents there's not many other i think it gets stuck on i think kiwi it, it can have a problem with <laughs> oh that's um, my husband <laughs> yeah apparently uh, i mean i know there's there's australian accented english in there but kiwi is slightly it is slightly different yeah different like 
like instead of bed they say bid in things ah. so <laughs> you know, it's, it, it seems but again you train it you yeah, train it exactly. so you, you you go to the vocabulary for the word bed or whatever and you say how you say it and it should get it so mm. yeah it, it copes with most accents yeah so i think like what you're saying is you it'd be better to set aside you know a block of time to actually train it do the reading and stuff like that so what i am excited about is you have courses now um i know no, but i'm excited about this because um your book your books are great and actually the quick cheats for writing the dragon that's free isn't it that's free yes you can pick that up at all good electronic all books. good electronic bookstores <laughs> um and the writer's guide to training your dragon is is more comprehensive um but yes. the courses are actually going to help people through the process aren't they so tell us a bit more about the courses um so people can go get them okay well the course originally i'd intended to do uh, like you know a writer's guide to training your dragon course um just one and uh I just found I couldn't do it because the the software is so different for the Mac and the PC. Um, and here's the interesting thing. Um, both pieces of software use the same voice engine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they use exactly, if you've got Dragon Premium 13 for PC, it uses the same engine as Dragon for Mac version 5. And if you have the new Dragon Professional Individual 15 for PC, um, it's the same as Dragon for Mac 6, okay? So it's got the same voice engine, but the programs themselves are completely different and how you teach um, vocabulary is completely different. How you do transcription is completely different and so on and so on. So I found myself having to take a step back and produce two separate courses, one for Mac and one for PC. Mm. And uh, the P the, interestingly, the Mac one as well um, covers how to use the PC version on your Mac if you decide you, know, you, you want to go that route. So they very much focus on getting you you know, to 99% or better, and I'm, that's not a, you know, an exaggeration. 99% or better, out, you know, out of the box, kind of in your first day or so of using it, and then the the trick actually is maintaining that. It's not getting it out of the box because it's pretty good out of the box. Um, it's maintaining that and and building your profile, getting your equipment set up correctly, getting all the technical aspects of things correct. Because even though a lot of it. I've tried to cover a lot of it in the book. It, it's surprising how many people, how many emails and stuff I get saying, how do I do this? How do I do that? You know, I just want to be shown. I just need someone to take me through it. So the idea behind the courses is that I'm going to take you through it. I'm going to take you through all of that, um, whether, you know, whichever platform you're on. Mm. Um, so so it's going to be the, the school of training your dragon. Oh, I'm excited. I am doing it. I'm telling everybody I'm going to do it. I, I, cause I'm, I'm kind of, I'm one of those people who did it. You know, I did the first draft of Destroyer of Worlds, yes, which, yeah. which is actually up for an award. Um, which really? is, wow. yeah, it's up for an international, thank you, international thriller writer award. And it's interesting because I wonder, I mean, obviously I've become a better writer over the years. Because you dictated it. Well, I wonder if, <laughs> if there is an element, I wonder if there's an element of natural writing and emotional resonance that might come through more with a dictated draft i don't know but none of my other books have been nominated for an award so um it would be anyway i'm going to do this course and i highly recommend uh, not that i've done it yet as we talk no. but i'm sure it's going to be amazing um so oh, where <laughs> so where can people find uh the course and the books and everything you do online okay well the best uh place to go is to www.traininyourdragon.com and uh i've got a blog there i've got loads of you know tips and tricks and i try to keep that updated it's got links there to all my books it'll have links to the courses and also if you sign up on on there there's a little thing which says free video training mm. and uh, if you sign up to that there's about an hour's worth of free uh video content for you as well so www.traininyourdragon.com fantastic thanks so much for your time scott that was great thank you for having me it's been a pleasure